Good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew on this beautiful day. It's a beautiful day outside. Let's rise, let's sing. Eyes fixed on you this morning. This beautiful day you have. Open your hearts and minds for worship today. I look up towards the sky, eyes fixed on you. Your presence is where I hide. Above every fear I rise, eyes fixed on you. And you'll never leave my side. Through wind and the waves, I'll follow your voice through the darkest of days. Whatever may come, you'll carry me through. Oh, you are the one I choose. Eyes fixed on you. Eyes fixed on you. I'll walk with you on the way. Trust every word you say. Shall I fear for you are with me? Whom shall I fear? You're by my side. You are for me. Who can stand against me? God, on you I'll fix my eyes. Whom shall I fear for? You are with me. Whom shall I fear? You're by my side. You are for me. Who can stand against me? God, I'll fix my eyes through wind and the waves I follow your voice through the darkest of days whatever may come you carry me through oh you are the one I choose eyes fixed on you Eyes fixed on you, eyes fixed on you, eyes fixed on you. Whom shall I fear for you who are with me? Whom shall I fear you're by my side? You are for me who can stand against me. God, on you I'll fix my eyes. Shall I feel for you are with me? Whom shall I be your by my side? You are for me who can stand against me, God on you, I'll fix my Please be seated. A few announcements. So a couple weeks ago when we had the uh, combined service and did our 
annual report. Some of you weren't able to make it. The annual reports are back on the welcome table. So if you didn't get one, please pick one up and see all that's been going on and will be going on for the coming year. Also, we're taking pictures for the directory, and that's both for folks that are, quote, official members, but folks that come, please get your picture taken. It's right in the classroom down the hall here. After the service, please stop by and have that picture taken. Fourth of July coming up in just a few days, eight days. Be ready for that. We are going to have lots of activities going on here, and we can use help. So please let us know on the connection card if you can come on out and help us, as well as if you can help in August with Vacation Bible School, you can mark that off also. And for you pickleball players that usually come on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the day, the Girl Scouts will be here all week, so you can't do that during the day this week. But it will be back. So a couple of other things. I have a quiz for you. Everybody ready to take a quiz? Now, you know, this is kind of like an open book quiz, right? Because the answer is on the back of your bulletin. And the quiz is, where are the two AEDs in our church facility? Does anyone know? Does everyone know? So there's one right outside the Fellowship Hall entrance over there, but where's the closest one to this place? If someone needs an AED, where are you going? Great Hall, right there where the gym is, right at the entrance between these two buildings, there is an AED, and they're easy to use. They tell you exactly what to do. Rose is smiling because I'm reminding everyone about AEDs because that's what you have to do so you know where they are. So now you've answered the quiz. You can read about on the back of the bulletin and, and know about those. So in your bulletin, there is a piece of paper. and If you want to take that out, it says the when, why, and how our weekly scriptures are shared. And the reason I want to talk about this is because we're a liturgical church and we have this pattern that we go through year after year of our liturgy of the what they call the pericope. And it's a three-year schedule. And we're in year C, which is the third year, the year of Luke. And if you pull this out and look at it, the church year starts with Advent, right? Building up to Christmas. So you start with Advent and you have Christmas. And then you get to that second week of January where we celebrate Christ's baptism. And that's the beginning of his ministry. And so that's where we start following his ministry. And we continue to follow that for some number of weeks. It switches each year based on, believe it or not, the sun. And when the moon rises and when there's a full moon. But anyway, we follow what happens from his ministry of baptism to transfiguration. Transfiguration we have every year. We celebrate that. That's when Jesus went up the mountain. He was transfigured and he appeared shining. And God said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. He's there with Moses and Elijah. And this year, that was Luke 9. So that's in Luke 9. So that's important because we're going to come back to that. After Transfiguration, right away, the, that coming Wednesday becomes Ash Wednesday and we enter Lent. And during Lent, we're looking at the last period of time right before Jesus gets to Jerusalem. And we're looking at to what, how he is our Savior. And so you kind of rush forward instead of Luke going to 10, 11, and 12. You actually move all the way toward the end of Jesus' time here on earth during Lent. And then we get the Holy Week. We get the Palm Sunday and we have those events of him entering Jerusalem and what happens. And then you have Good Friday when he dies on the cross for us. And then you have Easter and that's wonderful. And then the Easter season goes on for seven weeks, eight weeks. And that's all about after he's risen and talks about who he is as our Savior and Lord and all those things that happen with Easter. And you get to Ascension and he rises and we have those readings about him ascending. And then the next Sunday is Pentecost. And so we celebrate Pentecost. We did that just a couple weeks ago when the Holy Spirit comes and that's at the end of the Gospels and the beginning of Acts, and we hear about Pentecost. And then we have Holy Trinity Sunday, and we 
just did that one two weeks ago. And so then you start what sometimes is considered ordinary time, except this year we had a little break because somebody had some special event last week. And he got to pick the reading, so that kind of doesn't fall in here. So now we're back to Luke 9. Remember the transfiguration was Luke 9? We're back to Luke 9, and now we start going 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're following the normal gospel all the way up until we get to about mid-September, and we continue to follow it. But at that point, instead of Jesus moving toward Jerusalem, it's all these parables. And we have a really cool thing for that in the fall, where we're coming up with kind of like a skit, not like the trial quite way, but something kind of like that called the lunchroom and... Pastor Dave is working on that. And, um, and then we get to Thanksgiving and the last couple Sundays of the year. Or we talk about Jesus' second coming. And then we start all over again with Advent. And so that will be year A, which is Matthew. And year B, which is Mark. And year C is Luke. And you say, wait a second. Aren't there four Gospels? Where's John? Well, John is kind of scattered throughout, but particularly in this year, and we've had a lot of John readings. So that's, that's the pattern we follow, but particularly I want you to realize why we're on Luke 9 now, because you might have been saying, I've been following, it just doesn't make sense. Well, I'm trying to make it sense. And this is in your hymnal, and you can always look at it. And we have different colors, because if you notice, we hit green today. We had red because of... Vicar Dave's ordination, and then we had white because of Trinity, and then we had red because of Pentecost, and white because of Easter. Well, now we're in green, ordinary time. It's green, and that's in your hymnal as well if you're ever wondering why we do all these colors and all that. So that's a little education on what we're doing, and you'll hear a little bit more about it in the sermon. So, Pastor Dave, let's stand and begin our liturgy. Please rise. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. So Christ has truly set us free. Now hold on to your freedom and do not become slaves of the law again. Lord God, our gracious Father, confess that we have not walked by your spirit. Instead of using our freedom to love our neighbors as ourselves, we have served with our own selfish interests. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, by the mercy you show us in the death and resurrection of your Son. Fill us with the fruit of your Spirit, so that we may walk in the way of love and worship. Almighty God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Your sins have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All you ways are sure I will trust in you alone Higher than my sight High above my life I will trust in you alone In you alone Where you go, I'll go Where you stay, I'll stay When you move, I move I will follow you Light and 
into the world, light into my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I see, knowing I will find all I need in you alone. And you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I stay. When you move, I move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I love. How you serve, I serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah. In you there's life everlasting, in you there's freedom for my soul, in you there's joy, unending joy, and I will follow where you When you move, I move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I love. How you serve, I serve. If this life I lose, I will follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I love. How you serve, I serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. We're going to ask all the children to come forward now because we're going to be introducing a new summer series. So we're asking all the kids to come on down. Hi. I know there's some more coming from in the back. Now that I'm ordained, I can wear my, my, summer, my summer series hat. Wow, there's Miss Julie. Hi, Pastor Dave. Good to see you. Well, I've got all this stuff in my hands. Good to see you. Hey, guys. Well. Can I join the party? You sure can. We've got some big news for the kids today. Slide over here, guys. We have really big news. Are you yep. ready? Oh, I'm ready, all right. All right. What are we doing? Well we are going to be visiting some really fun places this summer. And as we do, we're going to learn about Jesus, too. Wow, that sounds great. You got a groovy hat. You like my hat? I like your hat. And what do, we like call this? what do we call this thing, Miss Julie? Ready? Yep. Passport, Passport to, to Summer, summer fun. fun. You guys don't look excited. But you will be. Because you, you know what, Miss Julie? I am so excited. I can see that. I can see that. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about this first. Okay. Now we have to go to the country of Israel. We're not going to Israel. <laughs> We're going You'll to places see. that you guys will likely go to this summer. And so it's passport to summer fun. So what do you need when you go on a trip to somewhere fun? A passport. Passport. Right? Yes. So if you go to another country, you need a passport. So we have passports for everybody, and there's a spot where you can write your name on it. And then each week, you're going to get a sticker to say that you've been to that place. Miss Lori's going to hand them out for us. Okay? Yes. Well, Good. can we go on our first adventure now? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a little excited, so go ahead. Okay. All right. Okay, we're going to go. You ready? Yes. We're going to go to ready? a. We're going to go to a lake, and we're going to go. Fishing. So, have you guys gone fishing before? I go fishing. You go fishing. Do wow. You fish or little fish. Do you throw them back or do you keep them? You throw, throw them, them back. back. Yeah. Anybody else go fishing? You've gone fishing. Big fish, little fish. Throw them back. Keep them. Both. 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 Wow. You like to go fishing, I know. Yes, I do. Okay. I'm. Um, I'm so anyway, are you ready to go fishing? We're at the lake. Let's go fishing. 
something's wrong. What? Well, we're pretending we're at a lake, but <laughs> there's a lake up there. The lake's up there. He's missing something. Like you can go fishing without a boat, but you need something. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot it. I'll be right back. out there that he forgot. There we go, Miss Julie. I got my fishing rod. Yep, yep, there is a fishing rod. So right. we can go now? Nope. Why? What's now what wrong? am I missing? Oh, oh, that's no problem. I have a worm right in here, Miss Julie. Okay, that's kind of gross. Um, but go ahead. There it is. That's not um, what is this? Yeah, I, I, I don't know about it. I'll put it on there. Give me your thing. Go ahead. Just know. trust me, Miss Julie. This gummy worm is going to work. So did you guys see him with the rocket last summer? <laughs> I'm just saying, that did not. I can't this this kind of gummy worm catches a special kind of fish. Yeah, I guess you. Yeah, well, you'll see. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Now I, I got to cast it. I, I'll be right back. I'm going to go cast this thing. So you guys think this is going to work? Like, what do you get with sugar? And sugar people? You think he's going to be a people? I, I don't know about this. <laughs> I, I don't know what he's going to get. I got something. I don't know what it is. I don't either. It's wow. It's a box with a bunch of Swedish fish inside. Swedish fish inside? Yes. This is awesome. I told you I'd catch something. Yeah. yeah. Are you um, impressed? Yeah. But you know, Mr. Yeah, yeah. I, but you, I don't know. But you. Oh, uh, she was watching me. Uh -huh. But you know, Miss Julie, all this talk about fishing it reminds me of Jesus. Does he remind you of Jesus when yeah. you talk about fishing? Yeah, yeah because, yeah. well, Jesus is the one who, who fishes for us. Yes, right. he fishes for all of us. And so he told his friends, I will make you fishers of men. But instead of using worms for bait, Jesus yeah, uses. I have something what he uses. All right, let's what see it. What do you it. think he uses? Love. Yes. Wow. Jesus uses love. Yes. And he, what happens to your hand? <laughs> Put that bait on there, Miss Jolie. So the Bible says exactly what you said, Miss Julie. Jesus said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. So we right. do that by? By sharing God's love, right? Yes. And so instead of fishing with gummy worms or bait, Jesus fishes with love. Love. Here goes and nothing, Miss Julie. of us. <laughs> I might. We might need prayer. I think we do need prayer. I know we need prayer. Me? preview of BBS. Um, let's hold our hands together. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to fish for us. We are grateful to be caught up in his love. Help us to share his love with others so that they too can know Jesus better. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Vicar, Pastor Dave. If my theology professor could only see me now. Am I right? So, I don't know. I think Swedish fish are kind of cool. So, I think you guys can get some Swedish fish to remind you how sweet Jesus' love is and that you want to share that love with others. You did a fishing derby? This is a different kind of fishing derby, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll pass out so, Swedish yeah, fish. Pastor Dave's going to pass out the fish. Miss Laurie's going to give you your no. passports, okay? There's your fish. And you can head back to see. Here you go, Scarlet. Fish. Here you go, Adrian, Regina. Here you go. Oh, you okay? Did you like going fishing? Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Okay, go over there and get your passport. Anybody... Anybody else need fish? Anybody out? Okay. All right. Now let's pray. Yep. Oh, 
Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, keep us faithful to the ways of your Son. Nourish us with all goodness and help us to leave behind all that hinders our relationship with you and with others. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may, you may remain seated. Good morning. The Old Promise readings come from 1 Kings chapter 19. While Elijah was on Mount Sinai, the Lord asked, Elijah, why are you here? He answered, Almighty God, I've always done my best to obey you, but your people have broken their solemn promise to you. They have torn down your altars and killed all your prophets, and now they are even trying to kill me. The Lord replied, Go out and stand on the mountain. I want you to be there when I pass by. All at once, a strong wind shook the mountain and shattered the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. Next, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Then there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Finally, there was a gentle breeze. And when Elijah heard it, he covered his face with his coat. He went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. A voice asked, Elijah, why are you here? Elijah answered, Almighty God, I've always done my best to obey you, but your people have broken their solemn promise to you. They have torn down your altars and killed all your prophets, and now they are even trying to kill me. The Lord said, Elijah, you can go back to the desert near Damascus, and when you get there, appoint Haziel to be king of Syria, then appoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, to be king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Japhat, to take your place as my prophet. Haziel will start killing the people who worship Baal. Jehu will kill those who escape from Haziel, and Elisha will kill those who escape from Jehu. But 7,000 Israelites have refused to worship Baal, and they will live. Elijah left and found Elisha plowing a field with a pair of oxen. There were 11 other men in front of him, and each one was plowing with a pair of oxen. Elijah went over and put his coat on Elisha. Elisha stopped plowing and ran after him. Let me kiss my parents goodbye, and I'll go with you, he said. You can go, Elijah said, but remember what I've done for you. Elisha left and took his oxen with him. He killed them and boiled them over a fire he had made with the wood from his plow. He gave the meat to the people who were with him, and they ate it. Then he left with Elijah and became his assistant. The new promise reading comes from Galatians chapter 5. Christ has set us free. This means we are really free. Now hold on to your freedom and don't ever become slaves of the law again. My friends, you were chosen to be free. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do anything you want. Use it as an opportunity to serve each other with love. All that the law says can be summed up in the command to love others as you love yourself. But if you keep attacking each other like wild animals, you had better watch out or you will destroy yourselves. If you are guided by the Spirit, you won't obey your selfish desires. The Spirit and your desires are enemies of each other. They are always fighting each other and keeping you from doing what you feel you should. But if you obey the Spirit, the law of Moses has no control over you. People's desires make them give in to immoral ways, filthy thoughts, and shameful deeds. They worship idols, practice witchcraft, hate others, and are hard to get along with. People, who, people become jealous, angry, and selfish. They not only argue and cause trouble, but they are envious. They get drunk, 
carry on at wild parties and do other evil things as well. I told you before, and I'm telling you again, no one who does these things will share in the blessings of God's kingdom. God's Spirit makes us loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and self-controlled. There is no law against behaving in any of these ways. And because we belong to Christ Jesus, we have killed our selfish desires and feelings. God's Spirit has given us life, and so we should follow the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. tragedy for me to turn away on my knees you have supplied when I was dead you gave me life how could I give it away so freely and now Follow you into the homes of the broken. Follow you into the world. And meet the needs for the poor and the needy God. Follow you into the world. Use my hands, use my feet to make your kingdom come. To the corners of the earth until your work is done. Cause faith without works is dead, and on the cross your blood was shed. So how could we not give it away so free? And I follow you into the homes of the broken, follow you into the world, and meet the needs for the poor and the needy God, follow you into the world, follow you into the homes of the broken. Follow you into the world and meet the needs for the poor and the needy God. Follow you into the world and I give all myself. I give all myself. I give all myself. To you, oh, I give all myself. Yes, I give all myself, and I give all myself to you. Follow you into the world. We'll meet the needs for the poor and the needy God. We'll follow you into the world. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter.
Not long before it was time for Jesus to be taken up to heaven, he made up his mind to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw what was happening, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down from heaven fire to destroy these people? But Jesus turned and corrected them for what they had said. Then they all went on to another village. And as they were walking along, a man said to them, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And he said to another man, Come, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, Yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied, Anyone who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the service in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Make my beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear saints in Christ, as I said last week, context is important. As I was explaining about our lectionary, about where we're going with the Gospel of Luke, that this Gospel comes from Luke 9. So this is the end of Luke 9. Let me take you back to the beginning of Luke 9. The beginning of Luke 9 was that question that Jesus asked. Who do people say that I am? And the apostles answered it in various ways that people said who Jesus was. But then he asked them, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, God. The one of God. So what Peter is saying is you are the Messiah. You are the Lord. You're the one promised. You are God. And then Jesus tells them for the first time. That I'm going to Jerusalem, where I will be arrested, I will suffer, I will be killed, and in three days I will rise. And to that, Peter says, no, Lord, there's no way that's going to happen. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. And then right after that, they go up the Mount of Transfiguration. And so that's where we had left it way back before Lent. And after they come down the mount is where our gospel today picks up. So what I want to talk about in the gospel of Luke from chapter 9 are five reactions that people have to Jesus. And so I'm going to go through each of those and, and you'll probably say, yeah, I get that one and I get that one. They're not just other people's reactions to Jesus. They're actually our reactions to Jesus quite often. And so maybe you can picture yourself and your reaction to that name, Jesus, and who Jesus is. Who Peter declared that he was. That he is the Lord. He is the Christ. So the first reaction I want to talk about is Peter's reaction. You know, Jesus says... I'm going to Jerusalem where I will be arrested, where I will suffer, where I will be killed, and in three days I rise. And Peter's rebuke is no, that won't happen. You know, Peter had confessed that Jesus was Lord, just like we confess Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is our Savior, that He's God. And God has this plan, this amazing plan. Amazing plan for us. And yet Peter rebukes him. So how often have you asked God about his plan and rebuked him over it? It's kind of like those words that some people use. How can a loving God allow this to happen? How can a loving God allow 
the war in Ukraine to happen? How can a loving God allow a shooter in a school? How can a loving God allow an earthquake that kills thousands? How can a loving God allow a tornado or a hurricane or a loved one to be hurt? To get sick and even die. How can a loving God do that? And so many have to just turn their back on God. And say, that's not my kind of God. I can't deal with that. But maybe you've thought about that. How can a loving God do that? How can a loving God let that occur? We've got some folks going through some really difficult stuff right now. Last week I talked about the branches that get pruned by God. Some of these things that happen are God pruning us. But the main thing, if you're going to declare that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, that he's your Lord, and that you're going to follow him then you have to allow his plan to take place. You have to have the confidence that he has a plan and that he is going to use all things for that plan. Yes, there is sin in this world, but we know God is in charge and there is this awesome plan. How can God allow Jesus to go to Jerusalem, get arrested, suffer and die, and in three days rise? Well, reaction number two is that Samaritan village. You know, Samaria is this place between Galilee and Jerusalem. And so when the map pops up there. So up at the top you have the Lake of Galilee and down in the brown area is Jerusalem. And you have to kind of go through Samaria to get there. And Jesus, during his first two years of ministry, had been in Samaria a few times that we're told about in scripture. You remember that woman at the well? And she goes and tells the village that come and see this man. He knows everything. And the village ends up believing in Jesus. And they want him to stay there. They don't want him to leave. So there's places in Samaria that know about Jesus. But the Jewish people did not like the Samaritans. In fact, they hated each other. Because of their beliefs. And so the Samaritan village is not welcoming him. Jesus had sent messengers, missionaries is the same word, to this village to let them know Jesus was coming. And they said he can't come. We don't want anyone going to Jerusalem, anyone who's like Jesus, to come to our village. In fact, this is probably the most common, is the most common reaction to the name Jesus. In the world. People who have other beliefs. Who don't even want to hear about Jesus. There are countries where they will arrest you and potentially kill you if you talk about Jesus. They don't want that name said. They don't want to hear it. There are people in this country who would prefer us never to say it. They don't want it in public. They don't want people to say it. They don't want to hear it. Whether they might be Muslim or Buddhist or they don't believe in God or they believe in Mother Earth as God or whatever their belief is, they don't want to hear about Jesus. What it means to follow Jesus. Why? Because of the repercussions of what that would mean to their life. What that might mean in the change in their life that would have to occur if they actually knew about Jesus and so they don't want to hear about Jesus and they say well you know it's good we know about Jesus but there are times in our lives when we don't want to hear the name Jesus there are times when we are doing things that we don't want to hear the name Jesus when we are thinking things and saying things that we know we shouldn't and the last thing we want to hear is the name Jesus and the fact that He's God and he's in control and we're doing those unloving things or saying those unloving things because it confronts us. Why? Because of the repercussions of that. And then there's reaction number three where that man runs up to Jesus and says, I will follow you wherever you go. Well, that sounds like us, right? 
We'll follow Jesus wherever he goes. We'll be there with him. That should be our reaction. But is it really? You know, we love our homes. We love the area that we live in. And we love what we have and all of our stuff. Are we really willing to follow Jesus wherever he would have us go? Whatever he would want us to do? Are you ready to move? Or are you ready to give your time and volunteer somewhere that maybe you don't want to be? Or are you willing to give your time, your comfort, to follow Jesus? Are you willing to be uncomfortable? Because we're told we're going to be uncomfortable following Jesus because we won't bend and we won't be in the world because we're not of this world are you willing to do those things Jesus says you know foxes have dens birds have nests but I have nowhere to lay my head are you willing to give of what you have to follow Jesus reaction number four the Holy Spirit grabs hold of somebody Jesus says, you know, follow me. You know, we can relate to that. There's people that that's happened to. Follow me. He says, wait, I have to go bury my father. I have to go take care of my family. You know, families are very important. In fact, they should be your second priority. Your first priority is to God, to follow God to love God, to worship God. And second is your spouse and your family and taking care of them. And by doing that, you can be worshiping God. But a lot of people allow their family and the things of this world to keep them from putting God first, to following where he's saying to follow, to take advantage of all the comforts we have in this life and to hold on to those things. Instead of that being a priority and letting the Holy Spirit lead you. Then reaction number five. Where the man says, I will follow you. But I've got to go back and say goodbye. Now we heard a little bit about that in the Old Testament. But in that case, Elisha burns his plow, gives it away. He cuts the past out and he goes forward. There is no time to ever plow again because he's burned the plow up. You know, the problem with a lot of people is hanging on to the past. It could be hanging on to a great past or it could be hanging on to a really yucky past. Some people cannot get over the hurt and pain that's happened in their past. Even though they've heard about forgiveness, they can't let go of that past. Other people have had this great past and they keep looking back and they make comments like, well, the way we did it 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago was this way. It was really great. And so Jesus says, well, first let's ask the question. How many of you have plowed a field with a tractor? Are there any of you? We got one, two, three. I don't know if you have too many more. And then the question would be, how many of you have plowed a field with horses or oxen? Like we heard in the Old Testament. You know, Gurdon told me he did it plenty. Of course, he's 100 years old. So this metaphor that Jesus uses maybe doesn't quite fit us because we haven't plowed. So I want to use a more modern day one. How many of you have driven a car? You know, I think probably almost all of you, right? You've driven a car. What happens if you're driving a car and you're looking in the rear view mirror all the time or you're turning around and looking back? You're going to veer off and you're probably going to wreck. If you hang on to the past and you're constantly looking at the past, you're in trouble. But our Christian faith, to be a Christian, is to look to the future. Always look to the future. Because that is our hope. That is what we have, is this heavenly kingdom that God has provided for us. We have a God that loves us 
a God that calls us his child. We have this amazing future. Don't let the past drag you down. Whether it's a past of hurt or a past of greatness, that's the past. And you can learn from the past, but you don't hang on to it. It's the future. It's what you do today that gets you to that future. It's loving people today. It's loving God today. And looking to eternal life and that glorious heavenly home that we have. Being a Christian is about the future. There will be those times, as I've sat with people this week in the hospital, next to a dying loved one, where you are pruned. But it's about the future and what that future means. About that amazing gift that God has given us. The fact that he's in control and that we have a time to look forward to where there is no pain where there is no crying. We have an amazing time to look forward to where there'll be no wrinkles, no hurt muscles, no COVID, no flu, none of that. A time of beauty and perfection and in God's presence. And so our Christian life, our Christian faith is about the future and looking forward. The good news in all of these reactions that have touched us in different ways. The good news is that every day is a new day. Every day we are forgiven because of what Christ did on the cross for us. Every day we get to start anew loving others. Loving God. Now may that peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. rise for the prayers of the church. They're in your bulletin and your response after each petition is have mercy, O oh God. Joining our voices with God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need, for all the followers of Christ, for the church and its ministries, and for the mission of the gospel that all will know the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. For those who govern in our nation, for those responsible for peace among people and nations, and for those who strive for freedom, that all are guided by Christ's command to love our neighbor as ourselves. Let us pray. For refugees in need of protection, for the homeless in need of shelter, for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, this morning we especially pray for Cheryl Gautney and Bill Oberhauser for healing. That God provide compassionate advocates and skilled professionals to aid them. Let us pray. For those who travel, for those celebrating significant events in their lives, and for this community of faith, that the love of Christ be present in our joy and pleasure, let us pray. Merciful God, you hear our prayers even before they are spoken. We commend these and all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and sent your Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send the presence of your Spirit into our hearts that he may provide us with a living faith and prepare us joyfully to receive him who comes to us in his body and his blood. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night that he was betrayed. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you for the remembrance of sins. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We believe this is Christ's true body and blood given for the forgiveness of sins. And if you do too, you are welcome to the table. Take the bread of life, broken for all my sin. Your body crucified to make me whole again. I will recall the cup. To trade this sinner's end for your new covenant. Hallelujah. I live my life in remembrance.
nations rose with fear and trembling your way born as my hope as Christ is formed in me If ever I deny your grace, remind me of the price you pay. Hallelujah. I live in Please rise. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you steadfast in the true faith of the life everlasting. Amen. We pray as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Blaze, next steps. So you heard those five reactions, and so maybe you can, during this week, kind of think of some of those things and how... They're actually our reactions. And think about the future. You're forgiven for those. You have a future. Love others. Be fruitful, as it said in our Galatians reading, of showing those fruits of the Spirit. And hold to that future, that amazing future that we all have in eternal life. Thank you. Now receive his benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Standing in the place without a faith lie. Staring in the face of fear that has to die. When you call my name, there's only one reply. No, I won't wait. I give you my whole life. I will go
Cause I've been losing sleep over the least of these And I'll find your riches among poverty Come on! Yes, I will go The blind will see, the lame will walk, the bound are free. In your name, the darkness hides, the mountains move, the dead will rise. In your name, oh, in your name, yes, I will go. Serve the Lord. In your name, the blind will see, the lame will walk, the bound are free. In your name, the darkness hides, the mountains move, the dead will rise. In your name, oh, in your name. So 